In this video, we are going to be modeling pH. Here is a list of the supplies you will need. When choosing which colors of construction paper you want to use, you might want to consider if you were using actual pH paper to test a liquid's pH, what color would it turn? So if you're looking at this chart, anything under 7 will be an acid. 7 is neutral, and anything above 7 is a base. So I chose to pick red, green, and purple as three out of the four pieces of construction paper. The other piece of construction paper won't matter. And obviously it doesn't, you don't have to do this, but it's something you might want to consider when choosing which color pieces of construction paper to choose. Or if you don't have construction paper, deciding which color to color in regular white sheets of paper. Once you have picked out those three colors for the pH scale portion of this, Stack them on top of each other, and then after that, fold them down um, long ways, crease it, and then fold it down, like them down, because there's all three of them, long ways again, crease it again, and then open it up. And when you open it up, I want you, out of the four sections, to cut one section off. With that one section, uh, which has three papers, of course, you're going to fold that down, and then you're going to fold it down again. And then you're going to fold it down again. So when you open it up, you're going to end up having three different colors with eight different sections each. Taking two of them, the ones that are going to be your acids and your bases, I want you to take those pieces of paper, the acid color on the left, so mine are red, and the base color on the right, so mine is purple, and I want you to overlap in the middle one of those sections. Then what you're going to do is the other colored piece of paper, in my case green, which is going to represent neutral, you're going to cut off one of those sections. You're going to place that rectangle on top of that overlapping section. So in other words, one section of the red and one section of the purple you have overlapped. Now you have taped the other color, in this case green for me. You're going to put that on top of that overlapped section and tape in. Um, right in the middle with that other color. So in my case, my neutral is going to represent green, and all the sections to the left will be my acids, all the sections to my right will be my bases. So on the left, you're going to need 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You'll have seven sections. Then you're going to have seven, which is the overlapping area. Then on your right, you're going to have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which again is another seven sections, but in the other direction. And just keep in mind, although I'm demonstrating using a black marker to write out all the numbers, it really doesn't matter what writing utensil you use. You just need to make sure whatever color you have on the left, each of those sections, you have a 0 through 6, the one in the middle of the different color is 7, and all the ones on the right, 8 through 14, are of your third color. Now we're going to make a viewing window. So take that piece of colored construction paper that was folded that you used for the neutral color and cut off another section. You're going to use that section just as a size guide. And then pulling out your fourth piece of construction paper, the one of a different color, I want you to set it up where on the one side you place that rectangle from the section you just cut out for the size guide. And you use that as a guide to fold that piece of construction paper over once and then fold it again a second time. So you're going to get like a set of two side-by-side -side sections that you want to cut off of that page. And when you cut off, of, cut it, actually cut it off, then I want you to take that rectangle that you were using for the size guide and place it right in the middle. And then use your marker or whatever you have to trace out that rectangle right in the middle. And then take your scissors or whatever you might have that you can poke through, poke a little hole through that rectangle area um, on this fourth piece of construction paper just to open it up so then you can get your scissors in there and cut it out. So I want you to cut out a viewing window. So when I say viewing window, what I'm talking about is being able to view only one number at a time um, through that quote unquote window um, on the pH scale. So go ahead and place your viewing window right where the seven or neutral is in the middle. And I want you to take the top end and the bottom end of each 
and fold it halfway so it's not covering up any of the viewing window, but so you have two folds, one on the top and one on the bottom. On the top folded down section, write the word acids and draw an arrow to the left because anything under seven is an acid. On the bottom section, write the word bases and draw an arrow to the right because anything greater than seven is a base. So just keep in mind is A comes before B, just like zero comes before 14 on the number line. So if you remember that, then you can always remember that acids come first on the left, starting with zero, and then bases come second on the right of seven. Then underneath the acids flap, I want you to write a capital H with a superscript plus sign, standing for the hydrogen ion, because that's what defines an acid. Acids have more hydrogen ions in solution compared to the ion we're going to talk about next associated with bases. When you flip up the flap underneath bases, I want you to write OH minus, so capital O, capital H, superscript negative sign, and that stands for the hydroxide ion. Bases have a higher concentration of hydroxide relative to hydrogen ions in a solution. So what does this mean for neutral? Go ahead and open up both flaps so you can't see the acids or bases labels. If you have an equal number of hydrogen ions as you do hydroxide ions, that is what it means to be neutral. So pure water is neutral. Um, so if you think about water, H2O, there's two hydrogens there and one oxygen, right? If water dissociates or gets split up and broken down into ions, what it turns into is one hydrogen ion and one hydroxide ion. So it's what we call neutral. It's a balance of each. With this in mind, go ahead and write the word neutral above the number seven. So you remember that is what it's called. Then on the viewing window to the left and right sides, I want you to write 10x. And the reason you're writing 10x on both sides is I want you to visualize that no matter which direction you go to the right or to the left, it's a difference in concentration by 10 of the ions of whichever ion side you're on. So for instance, we know neutral is 7, equal concentration of hydrogen ions relative to hydroxide ions, but the difference between a 6 and a 7, for instance, a 6 has 10 times the amount of hydrogen ions as a 7. And if we go to the other direction, an 8 has 10 times the number of hydroxide ions than 7, because pH is, is what we call logarithmic, so it goes based on a difference of 10. So between two numbers, it's not a difference of one, it's a difference of 10. To make things a little easier with our construction paper model, go ahead and write acids on the left side and write bases on the right side. And on the acid side, write the word stronger with an arrow going to the left and write the word weaker with an arrow going to the right. The stronger the acid, the higher the concentration of hydrogen ions. The weaker the acid, the lesser the concentration of hydrogen ions. So basically, as you approach neutral, I mean, eventually you're going to have the equal amount of hydrogen versus hydroxide ions, but the further left you go, the further the difference between the number of hydrogen ions in solution compared to hydroxide. Now on the basis side of your model, write the word weaker with an arrow facing left, because that's approaching seven, and the word stronger facing right. So for bases, it's a similar concept, but when we're approaching 14, that's got the highest concentration of hydroxide ions relative to hydrogen ions. So you have more hydroxide ions as you go to the right, which makes a stronger base. As you go closer to neutral, you have less hydroxide ions. And again, once you reach neutral, you have an even amount of both the hydrogen and the hydroxide ion. So now I want to make sure you really understand the idea that pH is logarithmic. Let's compare a 4, a pH of 4, to a pH of 2. So to go from 4 to 2, we have to go from 4 to 3, and from 3 to 2. But remember, every number that we go past is really a 10 times difference. So instead of the difference between 4 and 2 being that a 2 is a stronger acid and has 2 times the amount of hydrogen ions, really it's 10 times 10 or 100 times difference. So 2 is a stronger acid because it contains 100 times more hydrogen ions in solution relative to a solution with a pH of 4. Now let's go to the basis side of things. Let's compare a 9 to a 12. Again, we can't just go 
okay, 12 minus 9 is 3, so it's a difference of 3. No. You have to go from 9 to 10 times 10. 10 to 11, that's another times 10. 11 to 12, that's another times 10. So in other words, a 12 is a stronger base because it contains 1,000, meaning 10 times 10 times 10, 1,000 times more, in this case, hydroxide ions, compared to the pH of 9, a solution with that pH. Now, I'm going just on acids and bases in this video to explain it, um, and I'm just saying a stronger one versus a weaker one. You can also make reverse statements. You can say how many times less of the other ion something has, or you can talk about the weaker aster base, how many times less of the given ion it is. Um, so there's other ways to make a statement, but this is more of an introductory to pH video, so I hope it's helpful. But let's go ahead and take a look at the actual color change. I'm going to show you just a few sample solutions before we close out this video. So if you have something called pH paper, if you dip pH paper into an actual solution, it will indicate to you which pH value that solution is based on a color change. So there's a color chart, and you compare the color chart so you can see if what you have resulted in is an acid, a base, or neutral. So in this first sample, I'm dipping the paper into vinegar. Um, so when I dip it into vinegar, you can see the color change, and when you compare it to the color chart, you can see it is indeed an acid. So vinegar has acetic acid in it, it is an acid. My next sample, I'm dipping into Windex, so a small Windex solution. And when we sh compare that one to the color chart, we can see that Windex falls on the base side of things. And most cleaners do in general. Now I'm looking at distilled water. So I'm going to go ahead and dip into the distilled water, and you can see it is neutral. So distilled water has an equal amount of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. Whereas the vinegar has more hydrogens than hydroxide ions, and the Windex has more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions. So hopefully this little crash course in pH is helping you and helping it start to make a little bit of sense. Construction paper biology. Like, share, subscribe, oh, won't you please? Thanks!